video is sponsored by Pixel Games UK. Visit www.pixel-games.co.uk, home of game comparisons, gaming news and everything retro game related. This is Danny through Paisley Eyes, the Karate Kid special. Today we are going back to 1984, to the All Valley Tournament, and I'm so happy to be joined by semi-finalist, Daryl Vidal. Daryl, thanks for joining us. How are you, buddy? I'm doing great, Danny. Thanks for having me. California, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I believe it's a bit hot over there at the moment, a little bit toasty. Yes, we're in the middle of a heat wave. Uh, it was 106 yesterday and it's supposed to be hot again today. I don't even think if we combine all the relative days of our temperatures, we quite reach 106 <laughs> over here in England, buddy. So, uh, and, and are you guys, how's, how's the whole lockdown situation been? Where, where are you guys at in California? Uh, it's, I, I mean, it's, it's pathetic, actually, but uh, I think everyone's trying to do the best they can. Uh, yeah. restaurants, restaurants that are lucky enough to have patios can open and we can go and so you know we know them all the ones that have them and we, that's where we eat when we do them uh and you know they're trying to open up schools and it's very very political you know so i think everybody's trying to do the best they can good as long as you guys are, are staying safe and healthy you know that's the most important thing and yes. 1984 that's 36 years ago yes which makes me Makes me feel incredibly old because I was eight when the, <laughs> when the film okay, came out. So now you know how you're making me feel. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll, we'll come on to your age and the hilarity about that in a minute. But before, sure. and not about your age, not hilarity of your age, but the hilarity of your age in the film. Um, yeah. How did Daryl Vidal, you, uh, because we must remember that your name was also your, obviously your real name in the film, um, how did you get cast for the film initially, if you don't mind me asking? No, I don't mind at all. It's probably one of the one of the true Hollywood stories uh, because it, it happened just, just like it might in a movie. Um, I always joke that when you live in Southern California, uh, everybody's in the business, you know. So if I if I told you if I met you on the street and I told you that uh, I'm in the Karate Kid, you would probably come back and say you were in this movie or, or something like that. But um, as a kid, I, I uh, trained in karate and, and uh, started to do a lot of tournament competition. Uh, so in the 70s and early 80s, I, was, I would go with my instructor. He would actually bring me to these tournaments almost every weekend uh, in, in the summertime uh, in Los Angeles. Uh, and um, I was doing a lot of... Uh, 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 we do the kata competition, right? There's two main competitions in tournament karate. There's the kata, which is where you do like a, a floor exercise by yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and then there's the, the kumite or sparring where you're, you're fighting. And, uh, I, you know, I have to admit, I was dominating there for a, for a cycle. Uh, and, and the kata that I was doing had all the, uh, these flashy moves in it. You know, so a lot of the flashy kicks you see me doing in the karate kid are in this kata and the director uh, John Albinson and his assistant and I think you know that he also directed the Rocky films absolutely yeah as well as many others he was there scouting I mean it was literally uh, that that coincidental so you know after I had won the kata division and was ready to uh, get ready to compete in the, the fighting they, they came up to me and said how would you like to be in a movie and then that's how it happened and you know i got the phone numbers and uh the, you know started going to these sound stages uh, and i you know have no acting experience i was a martial artist obviously uh so uh yeah i really opened my eyes to the whole uh hollywood uh genre if you will and, and the rest is history and so for your first movie to star in the karate kid you got two words <laughs> When he asked you, when the referee asks you, Vidal, are you okay? And you went, I'm okay. I'm okay. Well, well, I have a great story for that because that's not me. It's not my voice. It was dubbed. No. Uh, I, no, yeah. I found out later uh, that if they paid me as a speaking part, I would have had to get a higher scale. 
So they just dubbed it in in post. <laughs> so when criminal. I saw that, I go, oh, where'd that come from? <laughs> That's cr- no. <laughs> let's 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 talk about the part then. So, for a start. I think the big giggle that I found out doing my homework is that, of course, the All Valley um, tournament was an under 18s tournament. Right. And you were 20 years of age. At the time, yeah. Of course, you know, it's all a movie, and, you know, I, I, I could easily play the part of an 18 year old. Baby faced yeah. assassin. Yeah. yeah. And the same, same thing with Ralph, you know, he, he was, I think he's a year older than me. So, he was 21 or 22 at the time, and we, you know, we're playing these 18-year-olds. But you know, I think we all pulled that off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you did. You guys look great. Now, I wanted to ask you: you were representing a club called Locust Valley. Yeah. Is there actually such a place, or is this something you came up with, or the scriptwriters came up with? Yeah, it's it was nothing that I knew anything about until they handed us the uniforms and said, okay, these are your uniforms, put them on. Uh, and uh, they came up with this whole Locust Valley thing. And it was funny that you mentioned that because I, I you know, that was, that's a good trivia question, but I was watching uh, some of the footage recently, you know, the, you're the best around montage. And there's another guy with the, the Cobra Kai, I mean, the, the Locust Valley key on, and I never really noticed that. So I said, oh, look, I've got a teammate. <laughs> I'd, I've never noticed that myself. That's a really good Easter egg. I'll have to have a look for that, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Really Watch it again, and there's a guy with that on, too. Now, the interesting thing is, is that you've, I think if I'm not mistaken, in the montage, you've done two Cobra Kai before you've made it to the final to fight William Zabka, of course, the great William Zabka who plays John Lawrence. Um, terrific baddie. We love him because he's such a menace. Um, yes, yes, he's a great bully. Yeah, he's really menacing looking. Apparently, Ralph Macchio was, was, was um, and, you know, for those of you who don't like any sort of language, I appreciate that. Excuse the next 30 seconds. I believe Ralph Macchio's actual words when he was asked what he thought of, of, of William Zabka in the in the screen test was he said he scared the living shit out of me (laughs) yeah i mean uh they they did everything they could to put people in the right mindset for this for this this movie and and so part of that uh, you might have heard that uh pat johnston the stunt coordinator uh, and the center judge in, in all of those fights um trained the Cobra Kai separately from Ralph and Pat Morita so that they would, they would build a bond, you know, with their group and then not have any connection with, with the two of them. Uh, and, and then he trained them in different ways and different styles too. So it, it was very effective. Yeah. Now, before, really? we, before we come on to your semi, semi-final fight with John Lawrence, because you, you've just brought up Pat Johnson there, who was, who was the, the referee. Uh, incredible moustache. He was one. Of, <laughs> he was one of three genuine black belts in the film. Outside, so outside of the movie, there was only three people who were actually black belts in real life. You were one of them. Pat Johnson was the other. Can you tell us who the third one was? Sure, he's the gentleman that played Bobby Brown, Ron Thomas. Very good. Very yes. good. I thought I might have got you with that, but I clearly haven't. Okay, so. Let's move on to the semi-final. Um, we, we mentioned William Zabka before, John Lawrence, who actually had no karate experience whatsoever, was just a movie actor. Um, Correct. And Correct. Um, as you said, the great Pat Johnson put him through his paces and, and helped him with his martial arts. Now, you, you were pulling out all sorts of moves that Bruce Lee would have been proud of. Um, <laughs> Jumping up in the air and spinning, and, and let's have it right. In real life, John Lawrence had got his ass kicked by Daryl Vidal. <laughs> you know, it, 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 was, well, it was wrong. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I try to stay humble about the whole thing, but you're right. You know, he, he trained for six weeks. Uh, <laughs> but, but to his credit, uh, you know, he's very athletic, uh, and he had wrestling background. So he did, mm. you know, he did, he, he wasn't. Uh, disabled or anything, he definitely could carry his own. Uh, but uh, and what you said about making Bruce Lee proud, that, that makes, I really take that as a compliment because <laughs> he, he's my big hero. But yeah, I mean, if it, at that time I was kind of in my peak, you know, I was first secondary black belt, I don't recall, still competing a lot. 
uh, and uh, tournament fighting was my thing. So yeah, I don't, I don't think it would have been a big competition. <laughs> Brilliant. How, how many takes did, uh, did you and William Zabka go through roughly to, to, to nail your fight? You know, that's a good question. I can't remember the exact number, but I will tell you this, that uh, they had eight cameras running simultaneously. So if you take a look at the whole, the whole ter- tournament uh, segment of, of the movie, it has some amazing uh, film footage. Uh, but um, they had a long, a long camera from way back that was hidden under the stands, and then they had a camera right, right under us, and then one of the one, so they were literally going, you know, one, two, three, eight cameras rolling, and then we would, would do the fight scene, and the fight scene was fully choreographed. Each point was fully, fully practiced, and we'd been practicing it for weeks. So uh, we probably ran the whole sequence five or six times uh, from beginning to end, uh, and then out of that, they 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 pieced together the whole, the whole was, fight. William Zabka, when when he when he wins um, and he he gets the second the second point in the in the semis. He does so with a kick, and you're up in the air as you come across. What I'm wondering you're is, right, is right. you know, that, that, that's quite a, a sort of a flight move, if you like. Was there any accidents or injuries in any of the takes? Did you manage to land one on him by accident or anything like that? Or? <laughs> no, uh, we, we practiced a lot, and I, and I actually heard Billy talk, talk about an interview when he was talking about it, and he reminded me of the fact that uh, when we were training, I actually told him, I said, look, uh, is it okay if we, we make some contact, you know, it'll be, you know, you're tough. I'm, you know, I can take it. So do you mind if we just go a little bit, you know, in karate, we're already hitting each other all the time. And, uh, and so, uh, we, it was, it was choreographed, uh, and there, there was no heavy contact. Uh, but, uh, at the same time, when you're, uh, you know, hotshot karate guy, like I was at the time, we were always doing, you know, fight scenes and, yeah. and practicing. So, uh, that, that particular move that you're talking about was where I do a jump back spin. So I'm actually literally flying through the air with a back spin. Uh, and so you can see that, you know, it's planned. He's, he kind of dodges it and then kicks me to the face. And I go to the ground, uh, you know, just without even kind of really letting like, touch my feet the ground and hitting the, the ground really hard. So I think I, I pulled that one off really good. You did good, bud. You did really good. And of course, William Zabka kicked you in the face, which is illegal, and went on to the final. We'll come back to that in a minute. Okay. Let, let's talk about Pat Morita, um, Mr. Miyagi. Wonderful, wonderful actor. Did you get to spend much time with him during the, during the film and on the set? Did you get to chat to him? What was he like? Yes, not a lot. But uh, being that I was the, the other Asian guy on set, we, we connected immediately. Uh, and since I was playing him, uh, you know, in the beach scene, we we got we did get to spend a lot of time together. Uh, and if you can recall, back then, to me, Pat Morita was Arnold from Happy Days, right? This tremendously funny comedian uh, who uh, was always cracking jokes, and that was him. He was the the a genuinely funny guy, and always always uh, you know cracking these. And today they'd be borderline jokes, you know, it's like, wow, you yeah. couldn't say that today, you know, yeah. both, both from a racial, uh, you know, a race aspect being Asian and, uh, they, you know, uh, I wouldn't say sexist, but from a, a male, female, you know, he might yeah. crack those type of jokes too, but fun. I mean, he would have you rolling on the ground laughing just in any conversation. And so just a wonderful guy, uh, just a, a, an interesting side note when uh, several years after the film, uh, for my 30th birthday, which would have been uh, 93, uh, my wife contacted him and he called me at my birthday party. Just, oh, wow. you know, so, you know, here's my wife saying, oh, there's a phone call for you and it's Pat Rita. And, you know, I was a little surprised that he remembered me, uh, but he, same guy, same wonderful, uh, you know, personality and just, you know, really warm, warm place in my heart for the guy. Brilliant. That's that's a that's a lovely story. For those of you guys who were wondering what Daryl meant then about the beach scene, Daryl is of course referring to the crane, which was done on the the posts in the water. That wasn't actually Pat Morita. It was in fact Daryl who doubled. Oh, I didn't up. mean to spoil that for you. <laughs> no, no, it's fine. It's fine. You doubled up for him as a, as a stunt double. Was that the only scene that you doubled up for him in the film, or? 
Yes, yes. Yeah. All the all the fight scenes are done by uh, Grandmaster Fumio Demura, uh, but the beach scene was me. Brilliant, brilliant. So I'm sure you're aware that as time has gone on, the internet has become more and more prevalent, and YouTube have managed to come Absolutely. out with this TV series, Cobra Kai, and all of a sudden the Karate Kid's been brought back to life again. Um, Absolutely. Now, you, you got to mention in season two, actually, I think it was uh, Tommy was talking to, to John Lawrence and your name cropped up. That's correct. Yeah, I was, I was really surprised. I mean, as another bit of trivia, uh, they use footage from the fight scene uh, from the Karate Kid in season one. Mm -hmm. So they had that, they had the crane kick. So they had to get releases. So they know that they know I'm out here. Uh, but uh, as I watched season two, uh, you know, no hints of anything until people started telling, telling me, uh, oh, you got mentioned, you got mentioned. So of course I had to watch it. And, and they talk about Tommy beating me. And I'm like, I don't think so. <laughs> no chance. Well, <laughs> apparently, and I only read this this very morning, just, just finishing off some homework before we did this interview. Apparently Tommy beats you in, in the semifinals in 1993. And, uh, 1983. Yeah. And I was like, as if, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how would we say it in in London? Not bloody likely. <laughs> not bloody likely. <laughs> yeah, not bloody likely at all. Um, let's talk about the kick now. The winning kick in the in the All Valley Final, Daniel um, successfully does the crane technique um, and lands one right in Johnny Lawrence's kisser. Um, yes. Probably would have put him to sleep, but nevertheless, we'll you know we'll, we'll move on from that, um, and we'll address the white elephant in the room. It was actually illegal because he wasn't supposed to kick above chest height. Um, but the interesting fact is, is, and it's it's one of two ways. I'd love you to tell us. It's either a you came up with the move, or b you adapted a genuine move within karate for this for this particular. Finish. How did that come about? And you know, tell us a little bit more about it. Yeah. Sure. That that is a a well debated question. Both both about how it came about, which I'll tell you, and then about the the legality of it. So in terms of how it came about, uh, the 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 writer, great writer Robert Mark Kamen, who has done tremendous other collection of films, including Taken and Transporter and, and a lot of these other great action films. Uh, had had introduced to me the actually it's written in the script that there was this crane technique where uh, uh, Pat Marino was standing on top of a post with one leg up and his arms out to the side like like a bird like a crane uh, and my initial response to that as a fighter and a tournament fighter was well why would you ever do that you know that doesn't make any sense uh, but <clears throat> they just they said that that, so that Daniel is going to have his leg injured, and that kind of create the premise for standing on one leg. Uh, and so uh, the way it came about was I said, okay, uh, I could do that. The, the, the concept was to stand on one leg uh, and then throw the kick and then land on that same leg. Uh, but it's, that was very difficult. I couldn't do it like they had imagined it. So I kind of said, look, this is how it's going to have to be. And it's a, it's a, it's a, a kick that's fairly common in karate called a double jump kick or a pump kick where, where you fake the first leg and then you throw the other leg. So that part of it is really not uh, unique at all. Uh, there's Japanese name for it. Uh, and there's, uh, you know, every, every style has something where they do that. Now what made it unique was the idea of putting the arms out to the side which again, you know, wouldn't really serve well in a karate match. But uh, so I, I would I would do it uh, and practice it, and they say, well, you got to do something with your hands. You know? I said, okay. So you know, I created this and this and the whole sequence of how the, the kick comes out, and oh. and that's where that that crane kick came from. And then did you did you teach this to Ralph Macchio then for the for the final scene? Yes, yes. After I had established how it was going to work, then I, you know, we worked together and make sure he was doing it the same way. What about the legality of the kick? Okay, so if you watch the tournament, 
uh, no matter what was said earlier, I see a lot of debate about what Ali says, but there's a lot of face shots. I mean, everybody's getting kicked in the face or punched <laughs> in the face. Uh, Ralph gets, uh, Dutch kicks Ralph in the face. Johnny kicks this other guy in the face. So the whole idea of face contact is illegal. I don't agree with. Uh, now in tournament competition, it's what we call kiss contact or, or touch contact, especially to the face. So the, typically, and I've center judged a lot you know, over the, the, the years, typically what we're looking for is uh, if there's any bruising, blood, or snapping of the neck, we would call that excessive contact. Okay. And the first, first time it happens, we would usually give a warning and, and then a penalty point. Uh, but if it was excessive, well, like you know, the way Johnny's head snapped back, uh, we might call it excessive right off the bat and just disqualify the, the, the fighter. So um, I contend that there's nothing illegal about the kick. Um, it might have been considered except, ex, uh, excessive, except they never called anything excessive. So, I mean, it would be inconsistent to do that. And for the championship point, I don't think they could have, could have done that. So the kick was legal. It might have been excessive, but they didn't call it Ralph one. <laughs> Fair play, fair play. Thanks for clearing that up for us. Sure. Well, it's only my opinion because, you know, I'll, I'll post that into uh, discussions and people will just go right past that and say, well, you know, this and that, and they'll still continue to debate it. So I don't no, think no, we'll you, on that you're, debate. Outside of being an actor, you're also a grandmaster, so I'm taking your word for it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, Danny. It's not, it's not for me to argue. For the, 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 the Cobra Kai TV series that we mentioned earlier on, mm -hmm. one of the most I've absolutely loved it. Being a kid, as I was, I was eight years of age when Karate Kid 1 came out and I was watching you guys doing your weird and wonderful stuff and just loving American action movies in the 80s. You mentioned Rocky. Rocky's also one of my one of my faves. The great thing about Cobra Kai for me was when they started bringing back those little nuggets of nostalgia. Yes. They yes. brought back LaRusso's yellow car that Miyagi gave him for his birthday they mentioned your name. They brought back Tommy. They brought a uh, Tommy, of course, God rest his soul. He's passed away. Right. Yes. Um, Bobby came back as well. Yep. Um, and the rumor around the campfire is, is that uh, Elizabeth Shue, Al Ali Mills may well make uh, an appearance in series three. Right. So the question on my lips is, will you be making any cameos in series three as the phone rang yet? <laughs> So I think the official answer is I can neither confirm nor deny that. Uh, <laughs> brilliant. So we're but but to, to, to add my, my two cents about your comments, I love it too. Uh, when I first watched it, uh, they have been expert at bringing in those little cliches, yeah. you know, that remind us of the original Karate Kid, you know, where she falls over the, the, the food, you know, and they, they're, they're just – replaying some of these things not not exactly but just reminiscent of uh and i think they've been they, it's been excellent at that and it, it forces you to kind of go back and watch it and when you go back and watch you know the karate kid uh there's a lot of funny lines in there you know there's there's a lot of jokes you know pat and uh, ralph they say funny things and you don't realize that oh this is actually a, a, a pretty funny movie uh but they they've leveraged that uh, they brought in these great characters and, and moved the, the stories forward. And so, yeah, I'm a big fan of it. So, th and this is a question for much debate at the moment on a lot of, um, a lot of sites. Is Daniel LaRusso now all of a sudden the bad guy and Johnny Lawrence is the good guy? Have we gone full circle? Well, I think they've, they've created that struggle, right, for each of them. Uh, and, and, and looking back to the original you know, there was, you know, I was always of the ilk that said, you know, Ralph caused all these problems on his own. You know, he, he's the one that hit Johnny and he's the one that hit on the girlfriend and, you know, kind of, kind of egged it all. He, you know, he put the water on Johnny. So Ralph was always kind of looking for it. Uh, and then as we move into Cobra Kai, I think, again, they've expertly created uh these internal conflicts with, with both Johnny and Daniel, where uh, Daniel is hanging on to this grudge uh, and wants to, you know, get his, 
he wants to put away Cobra Kai, but how, who would ever really think that, you know, it's like, let them do their thing and you do your thing. But, you know, so I, I love what they've done with that. It, it creates a great struggle. They're, they're both fighting their demons, you know, and it, it makes us wonder what, what happens next, you know. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely loving the fact that you're still passionate about it. You know, the TV series on the back of being in one of the movies. It's, it's, absolutely. it's, it's great. And of course, back in the real world, you're, um, as I mentioned, you're a grandmaster. Do you have your own dojo as well with your own students? So a uh, little bit of background, if you don't mind, if I go back, my instructor, Joe Rosas, who I started training with back in the late seventies, uh, and he's still teaching and training today, um, or teaching more, he's, he's getting up there, but um, that was in Chino, California, and I, I've been with him throughout my career. So every ranking that I've got, Grandmaster's 10th degree, I got my black belt in 81, uh, and I started teaching with him uh, after that so i continue to teach and then 30 years ago i moved to where i live now which is Murrieta, california and 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 when i trained with joe we trained in a parks and rec it was a parks and recreation program uh and and i love that i love the fact that uh, i can create a, an affordable you know accessible program uh for for students and it's not my full-time gig you know i have a regular job so so when I came to Murrieta, I got with the Parks and Rec, and both my wife and I actually teach for the Parks and Rec. She teaches dance, I teach karate. And I've continued to do that uh, through, with pretty much with no breaks, except for this whole COVID thing, which we're now doing uh, online. But yeah, so over the last 30 years, uh, you know, the way our system works every two or, or three or four years, uh, as long as you're still teaching and training, you get ranked, so yeah third, fourth, all the way up to 10th. And in 2012, I, I would achieve the rank of 10th of degree. Wow. That's some going. Fair play, my friend. That's really, really good going. Thank so you. I think with that kind of background, and then we've already established that you're the battered Tommy, you're the ruined Johnny in real life, and let's have it right, you're the probably battered Daniel as well. You should have been the under-18s golden trophy winner, shouldn't you? Well, I mean, let's all just have that as our special, uh, <laughs> special thought, right? Um, yeah, it, 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 it uh, again, you know, it's funny when you read the discussions, it, it's, it's a lot of people have struggle with separating the actors from the real people, right? Oh, yeah. So uh, that's always coming up. Uh, so, yeah. It, <laughs> <laughs> we'll leave it there. Daryl, yeah. it's been an absolute pleasure, my friend. Thank you so much. All right, Danny, us. thank you very much. And just one last thing I'm going to ask you. Give sure. me a random fact that we won't know about the Karate Kid movie. Um, okay. Well, I, you know, I, there's a couple that I've already put out there in different interviews, but uh I don't know if your fan base is London based or what or worldwide, but there is I make another appearance in the movie besides the tournament and the beach scene where I'm doing the crane kick. And that is that um, at the very beginning when they're playing soccer, yeah. I, I I'm in the background, uh, just at the back of a long shot, uh, and I'm wearing yellow sweatpants, a white hat. And I have a football that I throw into no one. I'm just throwing it like this because as they come and they, they bring the soccer ball and kick it towards the girls, John Alvinson wanted this long shot where he starts there and then pans over with the kids. And so there I am in the back throwing the football to no one. <laughs> and that was that was when that that um the the the, the, the song was playing. It was a Beach Boys style type. Yeah. Of, yeah. Beach ball, rock and roll type tune, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. I remember that when Ali and the girls are sat, sat round and uh, Daniel's iron are up and right. I, yeah. I'll have to look out for you. yellow pants you, and a white hat. Yeah, yeah. If you go back, you'll see it. And I got one, one, one other one, and I haven't said yeah. this to on any interviews. Great, an exclusive. You're hearing yeah. this first. This will be the first one. Is the the post the pilings that were doing the, the crane kick on? Yeah. It looked like it was like an old pier or something like that. Those were put in the beach the day before. And then they were oh. taken back out. Yeah, so they were not—they were not really there. 
through Paisley Eyes exclusive from Daryl Vidal, the man himself. Those posts were not there before the film. I absolutely love that. Buddy, once again, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so, so much. And, and through Paisley Eyes, your, to your fans and the Karate Kid fandom, I, I always say that the Karate Kid fans are the best around. Uh, and so thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Uh, you know, my little 15 minutes of fame, uh, I, I'm so happy to, to be with you. It's, you can't get any better than speaking to someone who's actually done it. Guys, if you've enjoyed this video, please like, please do subscribe. Follow Daryl on social media. He's a great, approachable, friendly guy. And go back and watch the movie. Yellow sweatpants, can I, white hat. Can I, can I put my social media tag? Please, up? buddy, yeah. Yeah, because I am very open. I, I do add people uh, and, and converse with people a lot. Um, I also sell, you know, autographs and and uh, my, my T-shirts of Vidal Kempo Karate. But on Facebook, you can find me at Vidal Kempo. Uh, on Twitter, I'm also Vidal Kempo, but with the at sign, it's at Kempo Vidal. Uh, and then on Instagram, it's Rock Breaker Boy. <laughs> There you go, guys. Buy the t-shirt. This guy's an absolute legend. You know it because you watched the film and you wouldn't be watching this without wanting to hear from Daryl, the man himself. Buddy, in the 106 degree heat out in California, take care. Plenty of suntan lotion. Okay, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Pleasure.